And I could just sit and listen to an hour of that. That would be, uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, we'll introduce everybody in just a moment. Uh, we always start with the children's time if you're visiting with us. And so I have my helpers here every week. And so we have JJ, who appears to be looking up to heaven. And then uh, Ziggy's over here. So let's see what they've got going on today. Today is about prayer. You know what prayer is? It's talking to God, right? And so one of the ways we think about prayer is we think about it with A-C-T-S, which is acts. So A, adoration, C, confession, T, thanks, thanks, and S, a fancy word, supplication, which just means to pray for each other, pray for other people. And so they have come today, and I've got to see what, uh, what's going on. So, JJ, what, uh, what are you doing? Well, I'm looking up to heaven and I'm praying. Well, very good. And Ziggy, what are you doing? I'm taking a nap. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, they're going to help us out today with this uh, ACTS, Acts. And so we're going to start with adoration, which is simply praising God or telling God uh, how great God is. And so you want to lead the way, JJ? Yeah. God is good. All the time. <laughs> All the time. God is good. There you go. That's adoration. All right. So now we come to confession. Oh, this should be interesting. So this is where you say you're sorry for what you've done wrong. And so they're going to pray to God now and ask for God's forgiveness. So this is the confession part of it. So, J.J., why don't you lead the way? Okay. I, I want to I wanna confess today, and, and fe I feel bad about the fact that I sneak into the kitchen here every night and get some food. Well, that's okay. You, you actually live here, so you should be able to do that. Well, I just feel bad about it sometimes, so I want to ask God to forgive me for it. Okay. All right, uh, Ziggy. Uh, what do you want to confess today? Well, I must confess, I yelled at J.J. the other day. What? Yeah, I was mad at him, and I yelled at him. And I feel bad about it now, so God, please forgive me. And will you forgive me too, J.J.? Yeah, yeah, I will. Oh, there you go. So that's confession, and now we come to Thanksgiving. So, J.J., what are you thankful for? God, I'm thankful for my church family and for being able to live here in the church and be able to be here all the time. Thank you very much. Well, that's nice. Thank you. Ziggy, what do you want to give thanks for? Well, I want to give thanks for my good buddy, J.J. He's been a friend to me. We talk all week, and he's always here with me. And so I thank God for you, J.J. Well, that's nice. Wow, they're doing a lot of hugging today. Okay, now we come to praying for each other. Okay, so J.J., you want to lead the way? Okay, God, I pray for my church family, that all of them might be well. And I, I pray for our children, that you would watch over them. And I pray for my good friend, Ziggy, that you'd help him. Oh, very good. All right, Ziggy, what do you want to pray for? Well, he took all my prayer requests away from me. I would just say ditto to all that. All right, well, there you go. So that's how you pray. Adoration, tell God how great God is. Confession, feel bad about the things you've done wrong. Ask forgiveness. Thanksgiving, give thanks to God for your blessings. And that fancy word supplication, which just means you pray for each other. So uh, thank you all very much. Thank you, thank you. Can we have some clapping? No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let's, let's get them down here. And, and uh, they have prayed for you. And so you can take them downstairs. And... Oh, the present? Oh, the present's gone. I don't know. Uh, maybe it went back. It's waiting for Christmas, I think. So... Under the bed? Yeah, it might be under the bed. We'll, we'll save it for Christmas time.
You just never know. <laughs> bye bye, we'll see you. Oh, she found it. <laughs> They're really good at that. <laughs> they can find those presents. Uh, well, thank you all for being here today. If you're visiting, uh, that's always our uh, start of uh, frivolity and, and some message for the children. And so no matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. We appreciate you being with us in person or online. Um, we do have a whole section back here for social distancing. Should you need to uh, <laughs> have some more room, there, there's no one back there. I've been watching a lot of services this week from here and around, uh, around really around the country. And everybody's attendance obviously is way down, and so we're grateful for the online presence and being able to, to record and have it up uh, this afternoon on our website. If uh, those who aren't here, uh, well, they won't know it until it's posted, so for, forget I said that. Okay, <laughs> please sign the registers, if you will, and uh, again, we're in the recommended mass time. Uh, we won't shun you or or uh, not welcome you if you don't have a mask on. Everybody's in their different positions on all of that. And so uh, just glad to have you joining us. And today we have Anne as our harpist. Thank you, Anne, for being here once again. You know, uh, I always feel more holy when a harp is here in the service. It's uh, <laughs> sort of uh, heavenly. Thank you. And Carol Sue is back. Thank you for providing music with us. Thomas is back here on the drums. And Brian hiding back there on the organ, so thank you all for providing music today. Henry's our liturgist, thanks to him. And if you look at your bulletin insert, you'll see all the announcements. Um, really, the only couple that I want to highlight are on the back. This is the month for Discovery Gardens Preschool, and every month we have a mission project that we give toward. Actually, Jenny and Deborah both teach at uh, Discovery Gardens, our teachers here. And so I'll be asking them uh, what we might provide for them as school starts. Anybody that's a teacher knows that uh, you end up uh, giving your own money towards supplies, and so we'll try to help them not have to do that by uh, getting the supplies that they need. And then on the bottom of the page, uh, we recently had a Southwest Conference event that was uh, online. Uh, now what? Informing, educating, and mobilizing progressive churches for reproductive rights. Uh, it is on the website for the conference, which is uh, just Google the Southwest Conference of the UCC, and it will be there on the front page. And obviously you can't click on those things I have down on the bottom there. That won't work. But if you go to the website, you'll find that. And so. Uh, uh, as they say, most of it was recorded, and I think you'll find it uh, helpful. All right, those are the announcements I wanted to highlight. Let us stand and share the peace of Christ with one another.
together from the New Century Hymnal, Every Time I Feel the Spirit, number 282. has said to us, forgive us our sins, we forgive those who sin against us. Christ has said to us, the kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. Christ is calling us today, God's will to be done in us, as serving one another and sharing the love of Christ. Christ is calling us this morning, morning, morning for worship. Join our hearts together, serving God by serving one another, lifting up our hearts in prayer and praise to Almighty God. The opening prayer, mystery beyond our knowing, close to us is our breathing, in humble awe we pray. We pray for your vision of justice and mercy to be made real in our world, even now. We pray for your vision of enough, enough sustenance, enough warmth or cooling, enough healing for all of your children. We pray for the grace to let go of revenge and hate as it is harmful to us. May we embrace your vision for life that we might follow you safely through this obstacle course. We give thanks for your presence that is with us in this life and beyond. Amen. The reading from scripture today is from Luke chapter 11, verses one through 13, which is found on the back page of your bulletin. This uh, reading has the Lord's Prayer and also the parable of the persistent friend at midnight. Persistent or depending on the translation, shameless. But uh, I'll leave that for you to decide. Jesus was praying in a certain place and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, uh, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, 
give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And then he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, uh, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked. My children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not initially get up and give him anything, because he is his friend, and least, at least because of his friend's persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if a child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? If you uh, would join us now in the next hymn, which is, O oh God, My God, number 515. Please stand as you are able.
Please be seated. I always try to use that hymn when we have uh, the topic of prayer. That's from the Iona community. It's a lament, which has many psalms that are laments. And it kind of uh, fits for a lot of us where we wonder where God is, why God, how long, why won't you answer. And so today I thought since we're talking about prayer, we would start in the confessional. I need some of my Catholic friends to help me out on, uh, I need like a little thing right here. I'll, I'll be in the confession booth today. Uh, but the confession is that prayer is a mystery to all of us. Uh, some people have given up on prayer. They don't understand why it doesn't work, why they haven't been answered. Uh, and so whether you've given up, whether you just pray in the foxhole and that's it, wherever you are on prayer this morning, you are with other people, I'm sure, because we all struggle, we all wonder, we all wish, and uh, so we gather here as infants in the preschool of prayer not really totally understanding it, how it works, why it doesn't work. And so I thought today we would start with uh, the children. Uh, the children have a lot to teach us, and so here's some children's prayers. Dear God, please take care of yourself. If anything happens to you, we are going to be in a real fix. <laughs> I never thought about that. <laughs> uh, I, I, True confession by a young guy, he said, uh, you know, I don't pray every day because every day I don't need something. <laughs> a lot of people think of prayer as just asking for what you want, and that's it. And so he represents that today. And then I think we can all uh, understand this prayer. A sister was being bothered by her brother, and she said to God, Please make him stop, God. And by the way, I've told you this many times before. <laughs> well, <laughs> today we have Luke's version of the Lord's Prayer. Uh, it might be news to you that there are different versions. We usually use the Matthew, Matthew version, which begins, Our Father who art in heaven. Uh, here in Luke, it starts with just Father. And notice Luke's version also doesn't have thy kingdom come in it. And so perhaps there were many versions of this Lord's Prayer uh, floating around back after Jesus uh, passed away and died. Uh, who knows? But uh, they are different in a little bit of uh, language. But I like uh, Luke's version because it begins not with our Father who art in heaven, but just Father. And that really is the signal to what prayer is all about. It is about relationship. It's not just about uh, dropping your coin in the machine and hoping that you get back what you wish. Uh, no, it's a relationship. And so as the Iona prayer suggested, my God, where are you? We can lament, we can be frustrated, we can be happy. We can be all kinds of things in prayer because it's a relationship with God and everything is okay to share. Uh, but the word father relates to this relational aspect of prayer. Now we've had trouble, of course, with the word father and people have tried their best to replace it. Uh, sometimes we say mother, which is perfectly appropriate. Uh, and sometimes people say father, mother. And when you start down that path, you're like, okay, how many gods are there? What? <laughs> you know, and so no, uh, no solution has ever been found that would give up the personal aspect of it. Now, now father, mother may work to some degree. Mother certainly works, father. Uh, but uh, others have tried to do holy one and other ways of speaking to God, and, and you lose that personal aspect because in the... The Greek New Testament, when Jesus says, Father, it, it's really Abba, it's Daddy, Papa. And so again, it's, it's a very intimate, relational kind of relationship with God that kind of sometimes gets lost if we give up the language and no one's really ever been able to fully do it, although some find Mother to be more uh, uh, good for them than Father, and that's certainly okay because God is not... <laughs> 
a father or a mother in terms of sexuality. God is God beyond that and his spirit. But at any rate, it begins with Father to show us that prayer is really about relationship more than anything else. And then again, in Luke, we don't have thy will be done. That is in Matthew's version. It's not here in Luke. But it does say, hallowed be your name and your kingdom come. And so that's perhaps the same thing as saying thy will be done, because when you pray for God's realm to come, you're really praying for God's will to be carried out. And so it all kind of goes together. But the prayer begins with the realization that we need God's realm to come, and so we pray for it. And we certainly are living in a time when we would wish for God's realm to come to this earth and bring peace and justice. Then we get into what uh, the best way to remember these is uh, food, forgiveness, and fidelity. And so this is the heart of the asking part of the prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Provide for us, we wish, and we pray for food and the things that keep us going. And then we pray for forgiveness. Different churches, you know, either use debts or trespasses or sins. Uh, they all relate to Bibles of the Middle Ages and whether they did debts or trespasses. And so in certain churches, you'll get the differences there. But uh, really, it comes down to sins. And notice, uh, we don't like to often think about this, but we say this every week without really profoundly thinking about it. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Uh, that is an ongoing process, that we receive forgiveness and we pass it on to others. And so we pray that every week, uh, very much a part of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And then fidelity. Uh, people sometimes stumble over, uh, do not lead us into temptation, as if God is the one that's going to lead us into temptation. There's other ver verses of the Bible that say God uh, does not tempt, uh, but God tests. And the Pope, I think, had a good uh, translation of this. Uh, he says, do not let us fall into temptation. In other words, please save us from it before we even get there because we need your help. Uh, we need your grace. And so that's how I often think about it. And then we come to the doxology. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Only in the Protestant churches, not in the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, and this is one of those uh, kind of humorous things. My Catholic friends will love this, so be sure to listen. The Protestants actually have this one wrong. The Catholic version is the correct one. There's no doxology on the Lord's Prayer, as you just saw from Luke or from Matthew. Uh, and so our Catholic friends always tease us, you know, we're Protestants, we're supposed to be the ones that are, you know, committed to the Bible and, and translating it just right. And then we add the doxology onto the Lord's Prayer. So we got to give them their due when, uh, when it's right, you know. Uh, and so we added the doxology. Where it comes from is good old Queen Elizabeth I. So God save the Queen, she gave us the doxology <laughs> that was added to the Protestant Bible. Uh, in order to separate us from the Catholic Church back then. And so uh, if you wonder about that, that's where it comes from. Okay, that's the basic prayer. And then we get to the encouragements to pray that Jesus gives us. These are in the form of how much more. In other words, if, if this is what a human would do, if this is what a human father would do, how much more will your God, listen to your prayers. And the first uh, parable is the parable of the friend at midnight, and I don't know why the New Revised Standard Version put in there persistent for this Greek word. It's anodia, it means shameless, as our theologian Henry over here rightly pointed out. How it got to be persistent, I don't know. But it means shameless. And, but the problem with it being persistent translation is that from that has come down to us that if we will just be persistent in our prayers, right, keep knocking and God will answer us, 
because God has to be uh, worn out by our prayers before God will act. Uh, that's not what this story is all about at all. Uh, it's a how much more story. And so the other problem with the parable is whether it's not really known whether it's the man knocking down the door that's being shameless or his friend who is going to come to the door who is shameless. On the one side, it is the person is knocking on the door at midnight and, and shamelessness because he needs help so much, he doesn't care if it's midnight, he's going to have to open up his whole household and wake everybody up, but he shamelessly knocks because he needs help that much. On the other side of the door is the homeowner who feels shame if he doesn't come and open the door, right? This is a hospitality culture. If he doesn't answer the door, even though it's midnight, uh, that will get out that he didn't open his door to his friend, and so he'll be shamed by that, and that, that's not part of that culture. He shouldn't be doing that sort of thing. Either way, it means shameless and not persistence, as if God can be only changed by your persistent prayer. Well, and then we have the final parable of, you know, if you ask your, your child to ask you for something, will you give them something else? Again, how much more kind of parable? If this is what humans will do when you listen to your children, and you won't give them something they didn't ask for, how much more will God not do that? for you. Having just said that uh, prayer isn't always about persistence, that, that's not what the parable of the friend at midnight is all about, but then he does say, ask and you will receive. Keep knocking, keep asking. And there is something to that that I've always said for years now about uh, in sales, if you've ever been through sales training, you know, you have those uh, people who are very positive and over positive in their beliefs and they manifest it. Uh, they say, you know, if you will set a goal of five sales this month, you'll get there. And a lot of times it happens. I, I don't understand why, but there's something about this manifesting that becomes true. If you keep asking, keep knocking, uh, keep setting the goal, you might be surpri surprised that you get there. I uh, often say that my wife manifested my presence here this morning. Uh, before I was even here, she would drive by the office out here on Gurley and look over at the office and imagine me being in the office. And now I am, so I don't, again, prayer is a big mystery, I don't understand it, why it works sometimes, why it doesn't work, but in the mystery of things, sometimes it seems to happen. So keep asking, keep knocking. You just never know. I've saved a quote that I've always found helpful about uh, how to think about prayer. You know, we all, well, maybe some of us worry about our technique, <laughs> how we pray, you know, got to pray just the right way or it won't happen. Uh, and this is a quote from Mark Trotter who said about prayer, throw everything up there. Stumble, use bad grammar, have long, embarrassing pauses, split your infinitives, and even dangle your participles. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Just groan or sigh if that's all you can do, because God's hearing your prayer does not depend on your eloquence, but on God's grace, which is already at work in your life. And so, like me, I'm sure sometimes for you, prayer has just been some deep sighs, groans, crying. It's all okay, whatever it is. Whatever prayer might look like, God's able to graciously receive it. And, but it remains a mystery why sometimes prayers are answered and why they're not. This past week, I received a call from a woman who needed help with her utility bill. And I can say this today, there's not going to be uh, too many people watching the video, so I, I can say this without the whole uh, town coming to my office door. But years ago, uh, when I was in uh, Pueblo, Colorado as a part-time pastor, and I was also in banking and investments, 
I was doing well, and I told God, I said, you know, anybody that asks me for help, I'm going to help. And su surprisingly, I don't get that many chances to help. People don't call, they don't come to the door. And no, I'm not going to let somebody, you know, take advantage of that. But I've always felt like, you know, the first time... And so uh, in Pueblo, I used to get requests, and I would go out of my way to uh, grant them uh, because I just felt like uh, God had sent them there. They had prayed and mysteriously found me. Well, this week, this woman called, and she needed help with her utility bill. And, and so uh, in the midst of the conversation, she said, and I told her I would help her out, and she said, you know, I prayed to my angels this morning, and I just knew God was going to help me. That was her way of saying, God, I guess. I, I prayed to my angels this morning, and I just knew God was going to help me. Uh, and so I'm sure you've had the same kind of experiences where prayer does get answered sometimes. Prayers sent up are heard and granted. Many others are not. It's a mystery to me. I'm a child in the school of prayer. I don't understand it, but... I do know that it happens sometimes, and so let's just keep asking, seeking, knocking. You just never know. You never know what might happen. But there is one more part of prayer I think we need to talk about this morning, and it's presented to us by a little boy and his father who go fishing. And so they go down to the water, and they hang their poles with the bait, and they go back up to the cabin, and a while later, they come back down, and there's some fish on the line. And the little boy says, I knew it. And the father said, how did you know it? And he said, I prayed about it. I said, okay. And they do this a few more times, and they get fish each time. At the end of the day, they put the poles down with, and go back to the cabin. And then they come back a little while, and they look at the pole, and there's no fish. And the little boy said, I knew it. Well, didn't you pray about it? No, I didn't pray about it because we didn't put any bait on the lines. <laughs> Sometimes our prayers need some uh, human activity connected to them. And I think that's part of the asking, seeking, knocking. Uh, in addition to just sitting in a closet and doing all that, you, you get out there and you seek and you knock and, and you find that with human activity comes divine activity. Well, no matter where you are in the school of prayer today, I encourage you just to keep praying. You never know. Share it all. The good, the bad, the ugly, the rage, the anger, whatever it is, God's grace can handle it. So let us join together in prayer.
Good, thank you. We come now to our morning prayer time, and uh, a lot of requests to share with you today. Um, David of uh, David and Coco, who are usually right back here, uh, is in the hospital having had an appendectomy and now has COVID, I believe. Uh, so uh, let's pray for David. Uh, thankfully, the surgery was successful, but uh, I don't know what kind of complications COVID will give it, but we want to pray for him uh, at this time and uh, Coco as well. We continue to pray for Reverend Gary, and uh, Reverend Gary told me recently he won't be back until COVID comes back down for obvious reasons for his health. So pray for him and uh, Reverend Lloyd, who continues to recover. Uh, pray for Jay, who is still recovering from COVID, and we hope to see him again someday. And uh, also uh, Sue, we continue to pray for, and uh, Phil and Mary in this time of grief, and for Marty and Dorothy, our shut-ins, and for Kathy, who uh, is part of Burton Kathy. Uh, <laughs> Kathy uh, is uh, undergoing some chemo and uh, going through a tough time, so pray for Kathy, if you will, at this time. A lot of requests, a lot that you've brought with you today, and so uh, take one or two of these requests and lift them up along with yours, and so let us pray together. Oh God, we come before you and ask that uh, you might attend to each of these requests that I have mentioned this morning, each of these individuals. Uh, they all need you, and they all need your healing, your strength, your grace, your help. Uh, and so we pray for it today. We lift up to you the unspoken requests that we all bring and pray that you might have your way in each of them. Give us insight to be able to put feet to our prayers if that's what's needed, to trust you, uh, to continue to pray and to argue with you and whatever it is, uh, you're able to, to handle it and so help us to be honest and uh, just share whatever is on our hearts. We do pray for our nation and world that needs so much today. Uh, may your kingdom, may your realm come bring about change on this planet for the people of Ukraine, for the refugees seeking asylum, uh, for peace from all over the world, and for justice, we pray. We ask this all in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to our morning offering. I uh, appreciate everyone who continues to give, both online and in person, to keep us going. and. Uh, we will now receive our morning offering.
dedication. As you have done with us, may we do for others, holding nothing back, but offering our treasures and lives that hope may be restored, that healing might touch the broken, that the suffering might be revived, and that all might know of your steadfast love in their lives. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please join us now in our final hymn today, Sweet Hour of Prayer, number 505.
Thank you for joining with us today. We appreciate you being here. Um, Thank you. I'm not on at all. All right, well, uh, we have communion down front if you wish to receive it. Thanks to Tom. We actually have a gluten-free option as well. So if you need to have gluten-free, we have that now available for you. We invite you to join us next door for a time of fellowship. And uh, thank you again for coming. May you go with the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.